There is something alive today that has existed since the beginning of time. Over a thousand years, it has evolved without change, without thought, without reason. It lives only to kill, a brainless murdering machine. It will attack and destroy anything. It is as if God created the devil and gave it leaves. What's your name? Nancy. Where are we going? Hiking. Come on. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. Why is it so bright in here? Because it's almost summer. We moved here in the winter. Oh, yeah. Oh, could you please feed the dog? Yeah, sure. You see Matthew outside? No. He must be in the backyard. Mm. By the way, remind me to water the lawn later. It looks a little dry. It's those big trees. Marcia said they gobble up all the rainwater. They don't leave anything for the grass. I'll still water it anyway. 
Hello? Cody here. Yeah. Really? Well, what do you normally do in that situation? Don't they decompose? No, no, no. Just tell them I'll meet them there in 15 minutes. Yeah, in, in the meantime, check some of the trails out and see what you can come up with. All right. What happened? A missing person. <laughs> From where? The woods. I, I gotta go. Nobody else saw her go into the woods? Maybe. I, I don't know. I, I was pretty wasted. Wasted enough to make her run away from you? No, sir. Maybe she got lost. Hey, do you think anything happened to her in these woods? Are you kidding? Don't worry, we'll find her. Cody here. Yeah, put him through. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, just as I figured. Where do we keep the campground clothes signs? We don't have any. Well, you better start making some. Where are you going? I'm going to the campground. But... Just make the signs. I'll explain later. Cody? Cody. There's a nasty rumor going around town that you're planning on closing the woods. Yes, I am. I see. You think you could make a decision like that without contacting me first? Why? It's my woods. <laughs> Your woods. Your woods happen to be in my town, which I still happen to be mayor of, remember? What does that have to do with anything? I'll tell you, Cody. People think of Hazelville as a nice place where they can come and hike and camp and have a good time. And their good time translates into business for us. You understand that? We have an image to uphold here, okay? If they think that these woods aren't safe to go in, they're just gonna go somewhere else. Doesn't mean you have to serve them up on a platter. Oh, come on, Cody. We have never had a problem like that in these woods. What else could have done that to that girl? Well, the coroner said on second thought he thinks maybe a lawnmower might have done it. Second thought? That's not what he said on the phone. He changed his mind. Change his mind? Are you nuts? How can he change his mind? Look, I don't know, Cody, but you're gonna have to change the death certificate. And you're backing this? Oh, 100%. Come on, Cody. A drunk girl goes hiking in the woods at night, which is dangerous enough as it is. She gets a little tired, she lays down. Next thing you know, a lawnmower comes along. A lawnmower. You expect me to believe a lawnmower did that? 
Who the hell mows their lawn at night? Lots of people. Hell, why do you think they put the headlights on the front of those things? Come on, Cody. If we tell people there's a bear in these woods, they're all gonna go, what? Huh? No big deal. We tell them there's a killer tree on the loose, and you have got pandemonium on Memorial Day. You got it? Yeah, I got it. Good. Good. I knew you'd see it my way. Good man. Hey, hi there, Ranger. Come down to get a haircut? Yeah, I snuck down from the grounds. Just a quick one. Can you fit me in? Sure, have a seat. I'll be through with Larry in a moment. Thanks. Hey guys. Hey there, Petey. What's that tree for? It's for the missus. She wants me to put it out on the deck. Got time for a trim? Sure, as soon as I get through with Larry here, and of course the ranger is next, and I'll take care of you. Nice. Hey, ranger. <laughs> <laughs> you know about you, Cody. <laughs> you don't like to go in the woods with my chum pal. <laughs> Afraid of the woods a little bit? <laughs> Got lousy taste in house plants, beauty. <laughs> <laughs> Tony, can I take this? I gotta make a phone call. Sure, but what about your haircut? I'll have to take a rain check. I gotta get back to the grounds. Boy, he's a strange one. Hey, pay attention. I oh, shut up. That's it. And I don't want you anywhere near those woods. Okay. Thanks a lot, Mom. Joshua, stay away from those woods. Hey, Ranger, you got a minute? I got a problem with this parking situation here. There's no parking spaces. I'm parked a quarter mile up the road. You know, I got a bad leg, my wife's got diarrhea, I got a bad tranny. Hey, Ranger, can you help me out? Yeah. Thanks. Mark. Hey. Hey. We just saw you pull up. Come on. I thought I'd just come by and check out the woods. Yeah? Well, we were just playing frisbee with Marsha. Great. How long are you going to be? Uh, not long. Will you, will you be home for supper? Yeah, I, I have to go back to town first, but I'll be home. Okay. You right. take See care, you. okay, Matt? Say bye, Dad. Stay out of the woods. Okay. Bye. Bye. <sighs> Casey! Casey, where are you? Casey! Casey, where are you?
Joshua! 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 Oh my God, Joshua! <laughs> Helen, did you know you can tell how old a tree is by counting its rings? Okay, enough of that stuff. You won't be able to sleep tonight. Hey, Matthew really loves his birthday present. Where is he? He's sitting in it. What? All right, Matthew, get out of the tent now. But, Dad... Get out! Look, he's just sitting in it. It's his birthday tomorrow. I don't want him in the woods. He's not in the woods. He's in a tent. I don't think he'll ever go in the woods again after what he saw today. Now, you know I don't want that to happen. Matthew, you heard your father. Get out of that tent right now. Aww. Where are you going? Got to run. Town meeting. <laughs> Listen, Cody, I don't care how many of you and your men it takes to get this done. Just get it done. Jim, this is exactly what I'm talking about. They'll be coming out of the woodwork. Listen, everybody inside, let's get this meeting started. I look to you to control this. All right, everybody, take your seats, please. Let's get this meeting started. It's about time. Now, as you all know, the reward stands at $200. Now, uh... Ranger Cody here has a few things he wants you all to know. Cody? Thank you. I, uh, just want you all to know that we've hired some extra Ranger deputies to help with the patrols. Are you gonna close the campground? We've also, uh, brought in a botanist from the Botanical Institute of New York. Are you gonna close the campground? Yes, we are. <laughs> You all know me. You know my business. <laughs> I'll catch this tree for you. But it ain't gonna be easy. Not like going in your garden and getting rid of some pesky weed. Bad piece of lumber this tree is. You're not careful? You'll swallow your hole. <laughs> I know. I've seen it. But I figure we gotta do this quick. Get the campers back. Otherwise, you can kiss this summer goodbye. But I figure I'm worth a lot more than a lousy 200 bucks and a pat on the back, Mr. Ranger. I'll find him for the 200. But I'll catch him and I'll kill him for a thousand. For that, you get the branches, the roots, the whole damn thing. Uh, thank you, Mr. Squint. We'll certainly entertain your offer. <laughs> I'm sure you will. If you'll excuse me, Mr. Mayor. Folks, have a nice day.
record. Drinks for everyone, courtesy of Sleeping Beauty here. <laughs> right. Billy, I would like a birch beer, please. Make sure you put it on the mayor's tab. Why can't you pay with this? Because the man owes me, and I intend on collecting every last nickel. Besides, but always tastes better when it comes out of his pocket. Come on, Squint. When are you gonna drop it? So the guy sold you a lemon. That was like three years ago. Yeah, it was three years ago. Except for he charged me so damn much for the car, it's gonna take me five years to pay it back. The way I figure it, that's a lot of birch beer. So how about it? I can't keep doing this. You know he's gonna figure out his tab's too high. Billy. I would like a birch beer, please. None of that bottled stuff. Okay, Squid, but this is the last time. Damn tree lovers. You know, we're gonna be out of a job soon. How do you figure that? Just look at them. You know they can't wait until Hazelville's been named some kind of national park. But why would they do that? We didn't do anything wrong. Not in the eyes of the sissy hippies or their friends in Washington. They're gonna save everything. First it was the whales, then it was the sharks, now it's the trees. You know, on TV, I saw this hippie chain himself to a tree just so they wouldn't cut it down. Chain themselves to a tree? What kind of sick people are these? I don't know. But I'd love to get my hands on this here fella. We live in a sick world, Petey. Imagine what kind of man would hug a tree. Hi, Melvin. What can I get? Ah, uh, nothing. I just came to see my good buddy Squin. <laughs> hey, Squin. Can I borrow some of your chains? Chains? What for? For this right here. Says you get two hundred dollar reward if you catch that there tree. You ain't gonna catch that tree. Oh, yes, I am. I've got myself a plan. I just need some more chains. The answer is no. Why not? Because you got about as much chance as catching that tree as the ranger's deputy has of getting laid. Oh, no. I know I can get it. I just need some more chains. How about I cut you a deal? A deal? Yeah, a deal. I'll give you 10% of the reward if I get that there tree. And if you don't? 
I'll do that to you, whatever you think's fair. How about if you don't catch the tree, then I'm gonna take my truck and I'm gonna roll over you till you're nice and flat like a pancake. Then I'm gonna take a spoon and slowly gouge out each of your eyeballs and feed them to my dog, Woody. Then I'm gonna find the highest tree in Hazelville and I'm gonna hang you from it so the buzzards can pick at your scabbing back. Then, after you've been up there for a few days and the sun's rising up real good, I'm gonna take down the remains of your burnt corpse and use it as a doormat. Okay, I think fair. Thanks, Grant. Hey, Fang. Yeah. Remember when you were wondering what kind of man hugs a tree? Yeah. Well, just ask him. Take a look. Excuse me, sir. Can I help you? You look lost. Yeah, actually, I'm trying to find a ranger, Mark Cody. Sorry, you ain't gonna find him in here. Can I get you some? Yeah, a bottle of water would be nice. Sorry, no bottled water. <laughs> My mistake, I forgot, I'm not in the city anymore. But whatever you have on tap is fine. Thanks. Excuse me. We don't serve his kind here. Hey, guys. Fang, what are you doing? Nothing, Billy. Did you know that you're serving a drink to the Tree Hug of the Year winner? Oh, is that what this is about? I can take care of that for you. Where's that pen? Listen, I, I'm not used to signing magazine covers. I've done the book thing, you know, bookstores, coffee houses. There, there's some holes in this. Well, I'll try and make it work for you. There. Here you go. Hey, what are you doing? I said we don't serve your kind here. Oh, really? So why don't you be like a tree and leave? Well, I, I was I was just here having a, a drink of water, uh, taking in the Hazelville hospitality that I've heard so much about. <laughs> Hazelville hospitality? You want to see it? Well, we'll show it to you. How about it, boys? Yeah. Hey, guys, 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 what are you doing? Oh, my God. Oh. Neanderthals. Neanderthals. See you around, plant boy! for that tree.
So old man Melvin calls up the office this morning, right? Screaming and hollering about how a tree ripped up his porch and dragged him through the mud. Imagine that. I'd have faith anything to see that. <laughs> it's not funny, Dusty. In fact, it's, it's stupidity. It's terrible. We could have another victim on our hands. I mean, where's it gonna end? We have townsfolk going out for a lousy 200 bucks trying to kill themselves. They're gonna kill themselves doing this. We gotta talk to the mayor right. and try to put an end to this. I mean, where is it gonna end? It... Dr. Kravitz, a visitor in the mayor. It's just, it's ridiculous. Ranger Cody. Yeah. Hey, I'm Max Cooper. We spoke on the phone. I was just doing some research. Pinus Plasticus. Oh, Max. Max Cooper. <laughs> Thank God you're here. I got here as soon as I could. I heard you needed some help. I already briefed you on the phone. So where do you need to start? Well, I think the most important thing for us to do is for me to take a look at the remains of the first victim. That's not a problem. I was just on my way up now to see the medical examiner. Great. Uh, Dusty, this is Max Cooper, the botanist we call. How you doing? This is Dusty, my uh, deputy. Nice to meet you. Dusty, why don't you just take care of things here? I'm going to bring him upstairs. Uh, I'll meet you in the lobby. All right, then. OK. where it says it. The victim was identified as Nancy Sheaves, female. Probable lawnmower accident. The height of the victim can only be guessed by the remains. The, the torso has been severed in mid-thorax. No major organs are visible, indicating Highness Strobus. May I have a glass of water, please? The neck has been punctured below the chin with massive blood loss. Thank you. There is a partially remaining right arm. Have you notified the National Guard about this? No. Only local jurisdiction. Now the enormous tissue loss prevents me from making any detailed analysis. But I can say with 99% accuracy that this conifer is larger than any conifer known to these woods. Well, this was no lawnmower accident. No wood chipper. And it certainly wasn't Bigfoot. It was a tree. This is Claire Brightwood reporting live from the small town of Hazelville, where a killer tree believed to have been responsible for the deaths of at least two people has been caught. This comes as a blessing for this town in light of the approaching holiday weekend. Many local merchants expressed concern that with a killer tree on the loose, business would suffer. That all comes to an end with today's events. Now I am told that the bounty for this tree is set at $200, a small price to pay for the security of knowing that these woods are safe once again. In Hazelville, this is Claire Brightwood reporting live for Channel 21 News. Congratulations, guys. Great job. Great job. Hey, guys, can I just get a group shot for the news tonight? Yes, Can I just get the guys that caught the tree in the picture, please? Hey, wait a minute, Ranger. Come here. Come on. Come on. Get the Come on. Fellas, help me out here. Hey, can someone hold up the sign? Thanks. All set? All right, everybody smile. Got it. Thanks, fellas. Thank you. Great job. That was great. Jim, can you believe it? They got it. 
They got it. All right. Well, I guess we can all rest a little easier now, huh? I wonder what kind of tree this is. So it has some sharp needles. Oh, yeah, but what kind of tree is it? Picea pugens endgelm. A what? Tell me, did Lauren get some pictures of it? Yeah, he's over there right now taking some shots. Yeah, the root radius just doesn't match up with a killer tree. I don't, I don't think this is the tree. Hey, what's with this root radius stuff? Look, we got some sharp needles. Look, all I'm saying is that this tree... I, I, don't, I don't think this is the tree. I mean, I, well, then you stick your hand in there. Look, this is quite intimidating, all right? You guys just back off. Good. I see Channel 21 is here, too. That's good. Yeah. Oh, listen, someone over here I want you to meet. Oh. Yeah. I'm just saying that it might not be the tree. Look, I really don't want to get into it with you fellas. I like my head where it is. Jim, this is Max Cooper, the botanist I called from the Botanical Institute of New York. Oh. Max, this is Jim Swindell, our mayor. Oh, Max. Uh, excuse me. Listen, Cody, can I talk to you for a second? Look, there are a lot of trees in the woods. Maple, spruce, pine. The chances that these dingbats caught the right one, it's a million to one. There's no other trees like this in these woods. Look, I'm not saying this isn't a rare tree. It is. It's a man-eater. But the problem is the needles don't match up with the wounds on the victim. So? The digestive system of this tree is very slow. Whatever it's eaten in the past couple days, the chances are it's still in there. Let's get a saw. Cut it open and see what's inside. This might be the only way to confirm it. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute, fellas. Let's be decent about this, all right? We got the tree, see? We don't need to be cutting it open to have that poor little kid ooze out all over the place here right in front of the television cameras. Come on, Cody. I've been real patient with you up till now, but I'm going to have to draw the line here. Ranger Cody? Yes. They told me you knew there was a killer tree out there. And you still let people go in the woods. I mean, you knew and you didn't do anything about it. And my son is dead. He is dead. Don't let her get to you, Cody. In a week, she'll be over all this. I won't. Thanks. Do you want something to drink? Uh, no, that's okay. Brought these. Oh, great, thanks. <laughs> Did you have a fun day at work? Terrific. <laughs> hey, you gonna eat that? No. Oh. <laughs> My husband tells me that you work in trees. <laughs> no, I've never heard it put that way before, but um, yes, I do. I work with trees. I love trees. <laughs> you love trees? Yes, I do. I love them. I find them absolutely amazing. When I was uh, 10, 10 years old, I got a kite for my birthday. I used to fly it in the park next to my house. And then one day it got caught in a tree, and I decided to go up and get it. Well, I climbed up, only to watch a curious horror the tree devour it right before my eyes. I mean, it ate, it ate that helpless kite right down to the ball of string. I know it sounds strange, but, but ever since that day, I've, I've been a tree lover, and I've dedicated my life to studying them. That's why I'm going back to New York tomorrow, to tell them that you still have a tree problem. Thanks for telling her. Oh, sorry. Um, didn't they say on TV that they caught the tree? They caught a tree. But they didn't catch the tree. And that's what I wanted to prove today by sawing it open. But that's not gonna happen. You know, you're gonna be the only man left in these woods once I'm gone. Mark hates the woods. Mark sits in the car when we go camping. 
I think it was a childhood thing. You know, he got lost in the woods as a kid on a, what, Cub Scout retreat? Boy Scout. Is it true that most people get attacked by trees in their own backyard? I mean, you don't have to be hiking or camping or anything like that? That's true. Now, this tree, he goes around planting his roots in, in areas where there's, where there's plenty of food. Yes, it's called uprooting. It's a theory most botanists support. And what do you say we go down and cut ourselves open a tree? Mark, are you allowed to do that? Of course I am. I'm the ranger. Cambium first, and then we'll work our way down to the heartwood, and then from there we'll open up its digestive system. Basketball. Looks like a film. Film a canister. Which project? Montana. Uh, it's like I figured. This one made its way down from the Rockies. Jesus, did he eat the whole car? Yup. Spruces, they'll eat just about anything that comes across their roots. Kite. They really like small animals like squirrels and chipmunks, though. Uh, I think that's it. I gotta tell the mayor. Close the campgrounds. You've still got a problem, Cody. You've got a tree in those woods with pine needles this big. Thanks. What the hell am I gonna do to convince the mayor to close the campgrounds? I mean, I need something concrete by tomorrow morning. Well, it is still nighttime. Trees do most of their feeding at night. If there's any truth to that uprooting theory, I think there's a good chance we can still spot it. What do you mean by that? Well, all we need to do is drive the car over to where it's feeding. In the woods? At night? <laughs> well, we're looking for a tree. We're not going to go into the ocean. Max, I can't do that. Yes, you can. You can do anything. You're the forest ranger, remember? What is that? This is my tree tracker 2000. What does it do? It's used for tracking trees at night. What's it doing now? It's scanning the woods for anything that moves. Looks like it found something. No, I think it's a pack of wolves or some deer or something. Are you sure? No. Wait, there's something else out there, just over there above the ridge. It's big. God, that's Heather Birch's car. You know her? Yeah. She's a she's a waitress in a town diner. Look, I've got to go out there and check something out. Wait a minute. Should we just call for a for a tow truck or something? We will. We will. Just hang on a minute. What's that for? I'm going to record this for my research. Well, what the hell do I do? You just sit here and wait. I'll be back in a couple seconds. Be careful. Stepping out of the vehicle. I'm approaching the wreckage. What appears to be a major accident. The large branches indicate a very severe tree attack. Presence of sap. Oh my god, this is this was a pinus strobus. I've never seen anything like this in these woods before. Coming up to the front of the vehicle. The smoke emanating from the front indicates radiator damage. Oh my god, there seems to be pine needles 
There's a barred pine needle. Oh my god. This is definitely a pine astrobus attack. Oh god. I'm about to open the front door of the car. Oh my god. Oh my god. What's the matter? What happened? What happened? You can call for that tow truck now. This is a great white pine, Jim. A big one. And any botanist in the world would tell you it's a man-eater. Look, it's simple. Apparently, a great white pine has staked its claim to the woods of Hazelville. And he's not going anywhere as long as there's food in the woods. Jim, there's no limit to what he's going to do. I mean, we've had two people killed inside of a week. I mean, it's going to happen again. It happened... Uh, Yellowstone. Yellowstone National Park, 1960. Four, eight people chewed up in a week. Tell them about the hikers. Look, a tree is attracted to exactly the same noise which occurs when human beings enter the woods. Jim, you open up the campgrounds on Memorial Day. It's like opening a, a buffet, for Christ's sake. Oh, look, guys. We depend on these woods for our very lives. And you close these campgrounds, we're finished. You're finished if you continue to ignore this problem. Jim, listen to them, for Christ's sakes. Close the campgrounds. No. I don't think either of you understands the full extent of our problems here. <laughs> I realize one thing. You're going to continue to ignore this problem until it plants roots in your ass. Oh, you'd like to prove that too, wouldn't you? Huh? Maybe get your picture in the National Enquirer. Oh, that's funny. You don't want to listen, don't listen. Have a nice day. Jim, would you just listen to him? No, I'm through listening. Now look, Cody, this is our problem, huh? And this sort of thing, this is disgusting. It's a disgrace to the whole community, and I won't stand for it. Now, you two, you do whatever you need to do to keep these campgrounds safe. But in the meantime, they stay open. End of discussion. The 48-hour camping ban has been lifted. The Hazelville campgrounds are officially reopened. So y'all can head on down and start claiming your campsite and pitching your tent. OK. Listen, I need to know how many guys you can get me for tomorrow. Uh, hey, listen, tell me again why I need to come to Forestville when I have a tree here already. <laughs> Look, I, I don't have the time to listen to this right now. We'll have to talk later, all right? I'll call you back. Mayor Swindell has been quoted as saying that some unnamed town employees made a big deal out of nothing and that he thinks it's better if we all just move on and pretend like the whole thing never even happened. Tuesday? That's no good. I need them for tomorrow. Look, all I'm asking is does he have a saw or doesn't he? The camping ban had been enforced due to the alleged injuries of several hikers as a result of a tree. In a statement released by the mayor's office, Mayor Swindell has said to be content with the result of the tree hunt. Yeah, hi, is this a switchboard? Uh, do you have lines going out to the sawmill? Great. Could you connect me, please? It's very urgent. I tried George. He's going away for the holiday, just like everyone else. What about Stephen? Have you tried Stephen? I tried him, too. He's going away. Well. It appears the campers are starting to arrive just a tad bit early this year, and they're already claiming their territory for what is expected to be a large turnout for the Memorial Day celebration. Cody! Cody, are you there? Cody here. Is that you, Max? Roger, Cody. We're all situated here. Ten four. Just hold your positions until we figure Dad, out where to. to, to Max, hold on a minute. Matt, could you hold it a minute? Would you do your old man a favor and pitch your tent in the field? But Dad, the field is for old farts. <laughs> okay, Hannah, I know, but would you do it for this old fart? Yeah, I guess. That'll go. Ranger Cody, I have visual contact by two o'clock position. Over. This is Ranger Cody. Over. Ranger Cody, this is Hazelville 2. I'm moving into position. Over. You know, you look like you're doing that. That's right. I'm not a tent Do you see anything? I thought I saw a shadow or something. Over. That's a negative, Dusty. I don't see anything from up here. Over. Sorry, false alarm. Must be this cloud coverage. We got, 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 we
Okay, back up, back up. Give him some air. Everyone, give him some air. You okay? Yeah, I'm okay. <laughs> kids with a cardboard tray. Hey, is everyone okay? Did everyone get out of the woods? Hey, fellas, you need any help over there? Fainted. Matt. Matt. Oh my God. Matthew. Matthew. He's, he's all right. His vitals are fine. Honey, Tommy's right here. Everything's gonna be all right. Hey, we're gonna go for a ride in the ambulance. How's that sound? Cody. I came as soon as I heard. Somebody said your son was hurt. Oh, my God, this is awful. Mark, we gotta get Matthew to the hospital. Helen, I want you to go without. No, 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 listen, without you. Listen, listen, he's gonna be here. fine. I have to take care of something first. Now, go there. I'll meet you there later. <laughs> oh, this is bad, Cody. This is real bad. I can't believe this is happening. What am I gonna do if the news cameras get a hold of this? Do you have a pen, Jim? A what? A pen? What's that? It's a contract to hire Squint. No, no, I can't sign that. Yes, you can, Jim, and you will. Look around you. Memorial Day is over. Dozens of people are hurt. My son is on his way to the hospital, and a man is dead. And you know what? Everyone thinks you're responsible for keeping these campgrounds open. Now sign us now. Look, Cody, I love this town. I was just trying to do what's best. I know that, but you think they do? Now sign this contract so we can hire Squint to hunt and kill that tree and get this thing over with once and for all. Sign it. Now we can finish this. A thousand dollars. Two hundred dollars a day whether I catch him or not. Get the mayor's office off my back about my taxes. You got it. Uh, case of birch beer, box of cigars, and uh, you provide the food. No problem. Can't find a good man these days unless he's over 45. Mr. Squint. Mr. Squint, you're gonna need an extra hand. Mr. Squint, this is Max Cooper from the Botanical Institute of New York. I know who he is. I've been tracking trees all my life. All your life, huh? <laughs> Listen, I'm not talking about pruning some rose bush or picking daisies in a field. I'm talking about working hard for a living talking about logging. Well, I'm not talking about going picking out a Christmas tree or a house plant either. I'm talking about finding a great white pine. <laughs> That's sure yourself, eh, college boy? Well, then. 
Let's go get ourselves a tree. <laughs> I packed you some extra Benadryl for your allergies, and your inhaler is in here. Thanks. And I got you some bug spray and extra sunscreen lotion. Helen, Helen, don't worry. Everything's gonna be okay. Mark, I don't understand this. Why can't that crazy lumberjack, why can't he just do this on his own? I have to do this, Helen. I can't ask you to understand, but I know I have to do this. Not just for the town. But for me. Come on, Cody. Daylight's wasted. Listen, don't use the air conditioner while I'm gone. The electric bill's been way too high lately. And you know money doesn't grow on trees. What am I going to tell Matthew? Tell him I'm going camping. Start scooping that fertilizer again. Let Cooper take a turn. Cooper drives the truck. Cody, you scoop. Now don't be a girly man. Get in the back. Wake up, sleepyhead. Now drive slow down that path, if you don't mind. You heard him. Slow down the path. Drive slow down the path. I can drive slow down the path. Why don't you come back here and scoop some of this shit? What's that? You're gonna need a bigger axe. Stop the truck. Ten footer. Fifteen. Two tons of. We're gonna need a bigger axe, right? We're gonna need a bigger axe, right? Cooper, hand me that axe and tie the other end of the chain to the keg. What are you doing? Cody, get in the cab. Drive slow ahead. I don't know what to do. Just follow that tree. <laughs> Don't lose it, Cody! Come on, you're losing it! 
What do we do now? We got one keg on him. So we stay out here until we find him. Yeah, but we could go back and get a bigger axe. Cody, it's not permanent. You want to see something permanent? What's that? Let me guess, a birthmark. <laughs> Mr. Cooper, that was the U.S. Tiger Fly. You were on the U.S. Tiger Fly? What's that? We're part of a special operation. We flew covert aerial missions. Surveillance over Saigon. Saigon? Vietnam? It was December 15th, 1967. We were flying a routine mission, but uh, we hit some bad weather somewhere near the Saigon border and we had to turn back. But we flew into this no fly zone somewhere over Mao Poi. Before we knew it, Charlie opened fire, and down we went. 200 men parachuted into the jungle. We had an idea where we were, but what we didn't know was the captain never radioed a distress signal. We weren't listed as MIA for a whole week. first light, the trees came cruising in. So we decided to form small groups to keep together. The idea was that when a tree came at you, you'd start hollering and screaming. Sometimes the tree would go away. Sometimes it wouldn't. Sometimes a tree stares you right in the eyes, scares the life right out of you. That's the thing about trees. They're silent like the night. They don't make a noise. They just stand there. But when their leaves start to get around you, that's when you hear that terrible scream echo in the woods. And the soil turns bloody red. Jesus. Don't worry, Ranger. After about a week, we were rescued. December the 23rd. 200 men went into the woods. Only 75 went home. We were all looking forward to being home for the holidays. But I'll tell you this. No one was looking forward to decorating a Christmas tree. I'll never have a Christmas tree in my house again. What's that? An owl. <laughs> Old MacDonald had a farm. E-I-E-I-O And on his farm he had a Pig! E-I-E-I-O With an oink oink here and an oink oink there Here an oink, there an oink, everywhere an oink oink Oh, MacDonald had a farm E-I-E-I-O And on his farm he had a Duck! E-I-E-I-O With a quack quack here and a quack quack there Here a quack, there a quack, everywhere a quack quack Old MacDonald had a farm E-I-E-I-O And on his farm he had a cow E-I-E-I-O With a moo moo here and a moo moo there Here a moo there Yeah.
Squint. Squint. The keg, it's... It's right here. Now what? Look. <sighs> back for more, huh? Cody, take that chain, attach it to the back of the truck. Cooper, why don't you help him? What's he doing? I don't know. All secure. Squint, what the hell are you doing? Nothing much. Just gonna take our little friend for a ride. <laughs> you going? I'm gonna call for help. Mayday, Mayday. This is Ranger Cody. Can anyone hear me? <laughs> what the hell did you do that for? Mayday, Mayday. Shut up, you girly man. Shut up? You just took away our only means of rescue and you want me to shut up? Oh, stop it, you sissy. You pansy. Mayday, Mayday. Shut up. Over. What exactly can you do with this thing? Well, with this, I can pump 30 cc's of stump right into him. You can get that little needle through that thick bark of his? No, I can't do that. But if I can get close enough with an anti-tree cage, I think I can get him in the roots. You go into the woods with that cage? That tree's in the woods. Our tree. A cage won't work with that tree. You got any better ideas?
A sapling! <laughs> Where's Squint? Oh, no. Uh, uh, you think we can make it out that way? Uh, I don't see why not. What day is it today? Isn't it Tuesday? I don't know. I think it's Tuesday. You know, I used to be afraid of the woods. <laughs> I can't imagine why.
<laughs> that was the U.S. spider fly. You were on the U.S. spider fly? It was tiger fly, spider fly. Aren't you coming? <laughs> Jim, you open up the campground on Memorial Day. It's like opening a camp campground for Christ's sake. Oh, man. <laughs> Wasted enough to make her run away from you? No, sir. I just, I screwed up the line. Is that because you're watching her? Maybe. I just screwed up the line. <laughs> I'm gonna slam right into your knees. Shut up! Shut up! You just took away our only means of rescue and you had no written in here. <laughs> you know, you're gonna be the only man left in these woods once I'm gone. <laughs> Have you notified the National Guard about this? That last one was real good, Joe. Then why don't we keep it? Because we, we always... <laughs> if I knew my lines, it'd be all right. Listen, Cody, I've been real patient with you here, but I'm gonna have to draw the line... ...at that feet right there. Look, all I'm saying is that the tree is not the killer tree. I mean, it's not the killer tree, but it's not the tree. It's not... This one is, I'm not saying it's not a tree. I mean, it's not the killer tree, but it, it's a man here. Look. And you're backing this 100%. I forgot the rest of the line. Look, I don't know, Cody, but you're gonna have to change the death certificate. I don't want to. Well, all right, screw it. A second look. That's not what he said on the phone. Well, what if he changed his mind? Are you, are you backing? Oh, man. Cody, it's a nasty rumor going around town that you're going to plan on closing the woods. <laughs> Ever since I took the Evelyn Wood spin reading curse, my reading has improved 100%. Their good time translates into business for us, you understand? And I lost it. All right. Over here. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I got in me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's stuck. Memorial Day is over. We have dozens of people killed. Yes, we do. This is a contract to hire... Uh -oh. I just wanted to do what's best for it. I know you do. And I do... <laughs> what's that? <laughs> I'd have paid anything to see that. It's not funny, Dusty. In fact, it's stupid. Stupid... Phil, I'm trying to shoot a wide shot here. <laughs> what? Holy Christ. <laughs> and on that farm he had a... Tree! Tree! tree. <laughs>